Welcome to Sakshi TV Special Immigration Show with Attorney Mr. Somaradi from Somaradi Law Groups. Please tune in to ask your questions. Before we begin the show, please note that before we begin the show, please note that the information provided on this show is not a legal advice and for general information purpose only. Somaradi Law Group needs no introduction, but if you need any consultation, you you can definitely log on to their website and get more details. Without any further delay, please welcome Mr. Somaradi Garu onto our show. Hello, Somaradi Garu. Hello, Andy. How are you? How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. I'm doing great. So, uh, before we start, uh, let me give you a brief description about our firm and then we'll dive into the topic for today's discussion. So, by the way, I'm Santosh Somaradi. I'm the founder of Somaradi Law Group. Somaradi Law Group is a full service law firm with offices in Virginia, New Jersey, North Carolina, and India. Our core areas of practice include immigration, litigation, corporate, and employment law. And in certain states, we also uh, practice family and criminal law matters. Okay. So for today's discussion, I know it's we are in the H and B cap season right now, and we'll be having more discussion about the H and B cap registration process the new regulations uh, that uh, went into effect, uh, which are beneficial for most of the uh, uh, people who are applying for h one this year. So we will dive into that topic. And if you have any further questions at the end of the session, I'll be happy to post. Okay. So Somaradi Garu, what is the H1B cap registration process? Good. So, Congress has authorized issuance of 65,000 H1B visas per year, right? Plus 20,000 extra H1Bs for those who have at least a master's or higher degree from a U.S. university. So in total, there are 85,000 H1B visas that can be issued for every physical year. But since USCIS has been receiving huge number of visa applications, visa applications, now what they did is they have come up with a system wherein you register your name, okay, into the USCIS database, and they conduct lottery and select eighty-five thousand visas. Until last year, they used to select the the registrations itself and conduct the lottery. But starting this year, they are not going to select the registration itself, but the beneficiaries. So let me explain how this works. So until last year, assume that there was one employee, employee maybe Rahul, right? And he has submitted registrations through company A, company B, company B, uh, C, and D, right? So he has submitted four registrations, right? So he would have received four slots into the visa lottery system. Okay, now we, under the new system, which is beneficiary centric, right? So no matter how many number of employers submit registrations on behalf of Rahul, only one registration will be entered into the lottery system. Okay, unlike four slots that I mentioned before, now there is only one slot for Rahul. Okay, that will be based on his passport number or a travel document number, right? So now everybody has equal chance of getting their uh, visa selected in lottery, whether you file through one employer or 10 employers, you still have the equal amount of chance of your petition getting selected in lottery, which makes it fair for everybody across the board. Okay, with that said, USCIS still do, um, uh, does not allow related entities to submit registrations on behalf of the same employee unless they have a separate legitimate job offer, right? So in this case, USCIS, like although Rahul's name will be selected into one, like as one uh, item into the lottery, it still does not allow companies A, B, and C if they're related to submit registrations on behalf of Rahul unless 
they each one of them has a separate legitimate job offer for law. Okay, now you might say that hey, what is the advantage that Rahul is getting by submitting through multiple multiple companies, right? Because anyways, it's it's only one slot that's going into the lottery. Here, once Rahul's name is selected in the lottery, all four of these companies will have the opportunity to submit HMB petition on behalf of Rahul. Okay, so now once Rahul's case got selected in the lottery, all four companies get notified that their registration has been settled in lottery and each one of them can file the petition. So by Rahul filing with these four employers, now he has four chances of getting the H1B approval. Although it did not increase his chance of getting the through the lottery system itself, it has increased his chance of getting the H1B approval. Right? So USCLs would not allow this also. So you have to be very careful that even though in the news this new system is very very centric, you still the employees employers should not have colluded or worked together to submit multiple registrations on behalf of the employee to unfairly increase their chance of getting selected in lottery or getting HRB approval. Okay. The other issue that you might encounter is that if one of the employers submits a registration using wrong passport number, right? So assume that employer A, B, C has submitted Rahul's current passport number, right? Whereas employer D submitted incorrect passport number, right? So now both the passport numbers will be get, will be sent to the lottery, right? Because the because it's it's different passport number, right? So because of this. Any petitions filed on behalf of Rahul will be denied because by submitting one wrong passport number, Rahul's chances of getting selected in lottery has increased. Right? So USCS has clearly stated that not more than one passport number has to be entered for the beneficiary. If there is one of the employers submits wrong information on behalf of the employee, then all the registrations will be cancelled. Okay. okay. Even if USCS approves the petition, they will later on come back and revoke it. Okay. So it's very, very, very important that the employee makes sure that uh, makes sure that correct information is entered into the system. So, uh, Somri Digaru, when does the H1B cap registration typically begin? The, we can start submitting the H1B cap registrations on March 6th, okay, and it ends on March 22nd at noon EST. But I highly recommend that you submit any registrations before the 21st, because on 22nd, if the payment does not go through or whatever happens, then your registration will be cancelled. Okay, so Although you have until March 22nd noon to submit the registrations, we try to complete everything by March 20th or 21st maximum. Okay. So okay. what kind of information do we need for the H1B cap registration? Yes. So all you need is the beneficiary's passport information. Okay. And that passport has to be valid. Unlike last year, this year, the beneficiary has to have a valid passport. If they don't have a valid passport, then they need to have a valid travel document. So travel document is only available for people who are not citizens of any country. So for example, if somebody is in asylum status or when, if there is somebody who doesn't have a country, right? Those people will have a travel document instead of a passport. So they can use the travel document. Right. So in this case, they need a passport. And if they are filing under the US master's cap, then it's better that we review their master's document, master's degree certificates to make sure that the person either has graduated with a master's degree or will be graduating as of the day we file the HMD petition. Even 
is there a yeah, is there a fee for the H1B cap registration? Yes, the fee, the USCIS fees this year did not change, so it's going to be still the ten dollar fee. But starting next year, it's going to increase to uh, two hundred fifty to one hundred fifty dollars. But this year, it will remain the same, which is the ten dollar fees. Uh, Good. Can an employer submit a uh, more uh, Multiple registration for the same beneficiary? No. no. Okay. So, as I mentioned, even earlier, right? Even if an employer submits multiple registrations, it will not benefit them in any way because there is only one passport number that goes into the lottery system. Okay. But if USCS realizes that rated employers work with other employers to Submit multiple registrations; they might deny all the petitions. All the uh, petitions. So there is no advantage, and highly recommend not to submit multiple registrations on behalf of the employee unless you have separate bona fide job offer to each one of these employers. Okay. Uh, one. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. One good thing about uh, the new system is that. Now, previously, no matter when your HMB gets selected in lottery, uh, when it's filed, you could only request uh, the HMB started from October 1st, right? So if you do that one, so for example, for CAP 2025, right? If you request the HMB start from October 1st, then you can get HMB approval only until September 30th of 2027, right? But under the new system, you could request H1B start to start from a future date also, as long as it's within 180 days from the day you file. So, for example, instead of filing the h one petition, if you're filing uh, on April 1st, you're filing on June 1st of 2024, right? Then you can request H1B to start from December 1st of 2024 and request H1B until November 30th of 2027. In that way, you can get the full three term period. Until last year, that was not the case. So no matter when your case got selected or when you file it, you could only request it from October 1st to September 30th period. How are the registrations selected for the H1B cap uh, lottery? So as I mentioned earlier, right? So what USCIS would do is they will choose, like, so when you submit the registration, they will take the passport number of that individual or the travel document number and run the lottery in that one. Every individual has a unique passport number, right? So they will use that number to run the lottery and once it's selected, then every person who applied for Cap like every employer who's, who applied for cap registration using that passport number will receive the selections. Uh, so, Dr. Som uh, sorry, Mr. Somanadi Garu, what is the next step for the uh, after you get selected in the lottery? Good. So, once a petition gets selected in lottery, then you have 90 days to submit the HMB petition. Right? So, Asian that uh, the lottery results are released on April 1st, right? Then USCIS will clearly indicate the period with the, between which you can file the petition. They will also mention whether the petition parts are in H regular cap or master's cap. Okay, so if it is selected in master's cap, then you have to submit the petition to the master's cap. If it's selected in regular cap, then you submit it in the regular cap, right? Apart from that, USCIS would also indicate the service center where you have to file the petition. Okay. Further, this year, USCIS is going to allow us to submit the HMB petitions online instead of sending mailing the petition to USCIS field offices directly. Okay, which could be a very good tool, but we need to like the we have to still test it out. That will save a lot of paper and mailing charges. Or uh, if my registration is not selected, uh, so when can I reapply it for the lottery? Good. So 
if your registry is not selected and sometimes what happened like last year right if uscs does not like for example uscs selects 100000 applicants and not everybody files it right then they may have a second lot okay but if they received enough applications in the first lot itself they may not conduct the second lot then you'll have to wait for a year to get into the lottery system okay but there are other options for an employee to get on to H1B. So one of the options is working for a non-profit organization, which is uh, CAS. There's a lot of CAP exempt employers. So you can get H1B even without going through the lottery process if you're employed with the CAP exempt employer. While being employed with the CAP exempt employer, any other employer can file what is called a concurrent H1B petition so that you could be working for a for profit entity also like an IT consulting firm. And what may be the common reasons for the rejection of the H1B cap registration? Well, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons would be, these are the typical mistakes to avoid. One is make sure you inform your bank regarding these payments, because all of a sudden, so many payments are going through like all in $10 uh, transactions. You'll be having make some time employees file like hundred thousand whatever, right? So make sure your bank does not reject those transactions because if they reject those transactions, then everything like the registration will be considered null and void. Second thing, make sure you enter the correct passport number. That's very 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 important this time uh, because unlike last time, wherein even if the passport number is slightly messed up. Where we can provide, I mean, they can show other documentation to them for the same individual and other stuff. This year, they're going to be very strict about the passport number. So make sure you submit the correct passport number. Third thing, you need to make sure that the beneficiary actually qualifies for the master's cap before submitting under master's cap, right? Because if you submit under a master's cap and the petition gets sent to the master's cap, and ultimately then you realize that he's not eligible for master's cap, then the registration will be considered like will not be valid. So you cannot get the HMB approval based on that. Okay. Also, in case uh, you are like, for example, after you submit the registration, if you are made a name change, like surname change, or sorry, there maybe there is like you extend your passport, all that stuff, that should be fine. Okay, so how does the new registration process differ from the traditional H1B visa approval? Well, as I mentioned, right? So the new registration process takes once like the passport number into consideration because of which whether an employee files through 10 employers or one employer, he'll have the equal chance of getting such trade model versus the traditional way of doing it, wherein if a person submitted to 10, 10 companies, then he has 10 percent, uh, 90 percent higher chance of getting a trade lottery compared to an individual who submitted registrations through one individual. Right? So the current process, I am not saying that it's the, the best process, but it, it does, it is much better than the previous processes. So uh, this information was really, really useful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Somrady Garu, for joining us. Thank you for the viewers for tuning in. You're watching Sakshi TV with me, Nitya, signing off. Thank you.